Victory runs bone deep. Here's your look at the new McFarlane Toys Fortnite Skull Trooper. Skull Trooper is a skin in Battle Royal that could be attained from the item shop in October and November 2017. Originally costing 1200 V-Bucks, it returned to the item shop on October 10th, 2018 for 1500 V-Bucks with a green variant and purple variant for original release owners. The very first thing we'll do, the very first thing we'll do is figure out how tall Skull Trooper is. So we'll take the Ultra Megatron and putting it to the very top of its head. According to the readout, the figure is exactly seven inches in height. And if somebody is yelling, what about centimeters? Centimeter wise, you're looking at about 18, about 17.8 to be exact. First thing we'll have a look at is the circular display stand that comes included with the figure. Now, I don't know why underneath here, it has these little circular little leg, almost little pegs here. They stick out actually. I don't even know if I mentioned it when we had a look at the cuddle team leader, but these do stick out a little bit higher. I'm not sure why they just didn't sculpt this completely off and just had it sitting on its own circular base, its own circular shape. I don't feel the need, I don't know why I necessarily mentioned that, but I just want to point it up just as a little small added detail. Speaking of added details, like the fact that you've got the raised lettering there of Fortnite, still once again, it kind of looks like a smiley face or a slightly somber face, I suppose. You've got pegs on the top there, or further up, pegs on the top, in which the figure can attach itself to. Uh, there's peg holes on the undersides of the feet. I mean, pr pretty boring, I, I will admit, to just attach the figure as such and not give it any sort of dynamic pose. But just for the sake of it, I just want to put the figure on the display stand to show you what it looks like and to compare it to another figure that we already had a look at, also from the McFarlane Toys Fortnite lineup. This was the Cuddle Team Leader. I still feel Cuddle Team Leader is my favorite. Granted, I've only looked at two figures, but so far I'm digging the overall design of it. This, for me, if you don't even play and don't even like Fortnite, there's some appreciation that could still be made for Cuddle Team Leader for a really nice sculpt and equally so, really nice looking colors. Let's talk turkey. Okay, well, we won't talk turkey, but let's talk the other things, the other accessories that come included with the figure. For starters, you get yourself the Death Valley Harvesting Tool, a really nice accompanying piece. You can see it is a pickaxe, kind of a pickaxe sort of design. And then you've got the skull featured on top there, which has been wrapped around the handle portion. It looks good. It feels, doesn't feel necessarily heavy, but it does feel like it's made of like a substantial plastic to it. Even though there's slight softness to the handle, it def definitely feels like like a stable, sturdy piece. Um, love the additional little nails that have been added to the top area here. Like I said, paint looks good on it. I have one problem with it, unfortunately. Either the hand, either the hands of the figures or the fact that this was cast in black plastic. Not sure, I say not sure, you probably can quite easily see. There's, there's rubbing that's happened on the handle and I have not had this figure out for very long putting it just simply into the Skull Trooper's hands, have developed this wear away that's on the handle. I don't know if it's actually from the hands, because I feel like the hands are just probably molded plastic. So I feel like the problem is that it's rubbing the paint off the handle. That's a real shame. It shouldn't be the case. And yet, unfortunately, as you can see it, the proof is in the pudding, my friends. It is right there, or right there, and right there. Pretty much anywhere in which the figure has held it at some point seems to have left something, something behind. That makes me sad. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. That would be likely my go-to for accessories to display the Skull Trooper with. 
but in the meantime, he also comes included with the Epic Bolt Action Sniper Rifle. Now this I don't have to worry as much about rubbing, although it that does still have the paint problem where this has been painted over top. So far I haven't noticed much wear, certainly not to the extent that this has had. I mean this is just, that's sad that that's happened so quickly. I keep even rotating it to the point where I miss it. It's right there and it's right there. Uh, so far the sniper hasn't had that problem, but again I haven't been as aggressive, I think, displaying it with the Skull Trooper as I have with the Death Valley Harvesting Tool. Again, nicely done. It looks like it's been probably cast likely in all black plastic. I can't imagine they would have painted this and painted the sniper scope up at the top. They likely would have only painted this sort of slightly tanned beige color here that makes up the majority of the handle portion. Look at that also in a second. I say by a second, we're going to put the accessories into its hand in a second. And then you've got the backpack. I was very surprised to find that the backpack is made of solid plastic. I mean, usually the squeeze test, even G.I. Joe's later into the years, like the 25th anniversary and up, went to a hollow plastic, casting the outside, and then the inside usually was just all hollowed out plastic. McFarlane, on the other hand, made this as solid plastic. Very surprised very appreciated that they would have made the resources available that they would have made this completely a solid plastic so we can go ahead and if you want to attach it to the back there's a hole just located right there quite easily enough you just wiggle it on i find it's actually easier to wiggle it on than to push it on then you don't have the risk of accidentally bending the peg you wiggle it on it usually gets on a lot quicker and you don't have to worry about the peg accidentally bending I wouldn't say it would break because it's made of a plastic, a softer plastic, but it does, it does make the figure a little bit more top heavy, all the more reasoning why you probably would want to make use of a display stand. But uh, I just also want to show you like the hands, for example, from what I can see, like those hands look like they're plastic. It doesn't look like they've been painted. I would imagine the smarter route would have been just to cast the entire figure all in black plastic and then just kind of go back and put the little indicators there of the skulls, the bones, I should say, all over the body. Very little would have been applied other than just really, like I said, marking those all out. So clearly they would have likely used black plastic, just cast the whole thing. Which then, if I go back, first of all, there's one hand has a trigger finger, one hand doesn't. So, I mean, if you are looking to put the rifle, the sniper rifle into its hand, his hand, I suppose, you can put it into this, you can see that the trigger finger very easily reaches the trigger section of the sniper rifle. And again, I just want to show you, if I take this off, eh, it's a little bit that has started to wear on that. I mean, I've only put the sniper rifle on him probably, I'd say maybe half a dozen times. Doesn't seem to be as much, but it, eh, it looks like it could be, paint could be an issue wearing on this as well. Shouldn't be the case. But my biggest problem is this. First of all, if you put it in this hand, he holds it well, like it's not gonna slide around. But if you wanna have him gripping it with both hands, I find the big problem is this hand right here. Uh, when you do put it into his hand, if you're not careful, you bend the thumb. And as I've bent the thumb already a couple of times, I noticed that there was a stress mark that was developing. It doesn't seem to be there right now, but it seems ever every time I almost I almost do it because this time it didn't do it. Every time I do put this in his hand, I always inadvertently start bending the thumb and I can start seeing the little white stress line starting to develop. Again, you can kind of slide that up. This is likely the way I'm gonna be displaying the figure. Kind of wish there was another place to put, say the sniper rifle. I see like there's a peg here. I'm looking around the backpack, unless I'm missing something. I don't see a slot where this can go. I don't see a slot anywhere on the side of the figure. Again, I'm looking on the backpack every which way, every which way, I don't see a hole for it. I mean, clearly it looks like there would have been a peg attachment somewhere here that, that would attach just to the side. But again, I don't see it. I don't know if they just left it off the last minute. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be a place for it. We won't spend a whole lot of time, I can't, 
eat up an entire review talking about where a sniper rifle is going to be located. But again, like I'm probably going to be displaying the Skull Trooper with this in his hand. As I take it off once again, and I'm not using a lot of force, there once again, paint's starting to come off. So this is something that you may want to be weary of. At the very least, if you're going to be putting it into its hand, maybe only do it once or twice. Maybe get it in a pose, and I really even shouldn't be saying that. Get it into a pose in which you like, and then just leave it in his hand. Because every time, like I said, you're going to be taking it off, you're going to be coming across the same problem. Not a good way to start. We'll put the Stantis to the side. We'll take the backpack off, because I just feel like that's adding extra weight to the figure. Still, again, I can't find any slotted area. Can you see anything? I don't see anything. I don't see a section at all in which that will attach. I'm sure at the moment, I mean, I've spent a good handful of time looking at this before I even started the review. I don't even see a section in which that sniper rifle goes. Again, I'm not gonna eat up, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna eat up the entire review talking about that. So let's have a look at Skull Trooper. Much like, very much like Cuddle Team Leader was, seems to be inspired by, say, Breaking Bad, Care Bears. You could probably see this, and if you're a child product of the 80s like myself, you could probably see where some inspiration might have been made for Skull Trooper. I'm thinking Karate Kid. Yeah, I'm thinking Halloween, I'm thinking Karate Kid, I'm thinking about the, bang, the group of bullies that attack Daniel LaRusso, which I might also add was provoked. I don't think they would have attacked him and chased after him had he not sprinkled uh, the the uh, hose into the bathroom stall. Anyways, I digress. I could go on and on talking about Karate Kid, but I clearly feel like this is an inspiration for what we would see with Skull Trooper. The fact that it does have a hooded, like a hooded uh, hood piece that goes over top of its head, the painted face on the front mimicking that of the skull, and the fact that you've got an all black outfit with indicators of white bones. There's got to be a connection between the two. You would imagine also the creators of Fortnite probably were products of the 80s, I would imagine so, and uh, got some inspiration cues from that. It's sort of unfortunate though when you look at a figure like this because if not for, like if you just took all the bones off, just took, just took them all off, and you looked at a figure barren of paint, you would feel again like it's missing a whole lot. For what it needed to be, for what it needs to be, I suppose, it underneath all of this, because there is no extra paint to kind of help elevate the sculpt, so much of the sculpt gets lost. Things like the belt, the little pockets, the little rivets there, the little whole notches in which the belt would be adjusted. Pockets, for example, little uh, stitches and stuff that have been patched up on the, on the outfit. All of which feels, unfortunately, like it gets lost, simply just because of the design choice for the figure, for the character, I should say. I mean, it's you can see and you kind of have to look at it and overlook for the fact that it does miss so much paint deliberately that things like shin guards, for example, as you can see, have been strapped around to the back of the legs. Again, you've got pockets, you've got the belt, the pockets even on the back of the pants. Even on the back here, the straps get completely lost because you're looking at dealing with only black plastic and you're dealing with the, the bones. So how do the bones work? how bones work. I know you know how bones work. How do bones work on this figure? I don't feel like they're rushed, but I also feel like they look at times like a second coat could have been put on there. I know even in the game, like images of the Skull Trooper, even when you look online, it never looks like the bones are completely finished. It looks like it, somebody would have just gone on there and just brushed them on with paint and then just ran out. So I guess intentionally, deliberately, McFarlane Toys sort of does the same approach with his bones. It doesn't look like he finishes them like a second coat of white paint could have fixed. I think it's intentional that it looks like, like the white has a few streaks in it. It doesn't look like it's finished. Uh, even like on the front, it looks like it kind of just rushly applied there. But again, I guess that's intentional for the design of this character. The head sculpt's pretty good. Karate Kid. The purple is the but the only bit of breakup of color that you actually get on this guy. Most, again, all of it is just black and white. 
Again, decent, decent looking figure though. Posability on this guy. Let's run through that together. You and me and Tommy22 makes three. The head rotates all the way around. It's working its way on a ball joint, I guess. Could I take that off? I guess it's irrelevant, but I, I took it off anyways. So I wanted to show you, there's a, there's a dumbbell ball joint. That's what I've mentioned in previous reviews. You basically have a stem and then you have a ball joint working on either end of it. That means it rotates here, but it also then rotates where like a head, for example, would be attached to. It's a rather unique thing about this particular figure as well. If I can get the head back onto the ball joint, don't let me regret that decision. There we go. All right. So we, we uh, established there's a ball joint in there here and here, not way up here, but about here. So you get two ball joints working in your favor. But then as well, McFarlane puts a third ball joint, likely a ball joint here and a ball joint here. So a double dumbbell ball joint crazy. It means you get a full range of motion up in the head, but then you get a second full range of motion at the base of the neck. Pretty good. I like that. The uh, the arms hinge out. They rotate all the way around. They swivel at the bicep. He has a double hinge on the elbow, and you can sort of see where a little bit of that white starts breaking up. Also forgot to mention, the little bad little calm there is also done in blue, with a little bit of lighter blue there we go, showing off the meter. So that's a little bit of extra color there as well. You got the upper torso ball joint. You got the lower torso ball joint. You got the legs that split out slightly awkwardly, but I, that's the type of ball joint, the type of hinging that they went with this particular figure. The legs move forward, the legs move back and out as a swivel, basically where it attaches to the top of the thigh area. Double hinge on the knee. Sort of see now where the the uh, little shin guard here sticks out from the rest of the fore, the uh, the lower leg here, the calf area of the leg. And then even though the boots are a little thin, that's the way that it's supposed to look, you've got the hinge happening right here. The legs rotate, the feet rotate all the way around. And then on top of that, you've got a hinge joint that happens on the, f on the toes, the foot portion. The toes also have toe articulation. That's pretty good, I like that. It's to note as well, I think just by the nature of the way that the figure is sculpted, the plastic feels slightly different. I don't want to use the term cheap plastic, but I think it's just by the way the sculpting of the figure is. Like if I compare it, for example, to, uh, it's not 100% fair because they're completely different types of molds, but I feel like Cuddle Team Leader, even though it really would be using the same plastic. The plastic feels different, definitely, between the two figures. This one feels a little bit of a different, cheaper plastic. Even though I know both the figures are likely using the exact same plastic, it would make no sense why they would use different plastic. Um, of the two figures, personally speaking, it's just my own, my own opinion, and take my opinion with a grain of salt, of the two figures, my favorite is Cuddle Team Leader. Skull Trooper's good, and it still has those kind of nods, if you will, to things that I grew up with. So for that reason, I'm kind of digging the designs of these Fortnite characters. I still like Cuddle Team Leader, but that, again, is just my own opinion. Despite for the fact that there is no peg hole from what I can see on the backpack of Skull Trooper, in final looks, I've almost got it as if he's pulling back, he's reaching back and grabbing the Epic Bolt Action Sniper Rifle with a Death Valley Harvesting Tool in his other hand. This is not likely how I'm going to be displaying the figure, but this is just in final looks so I can show you that he can hold both accessories. Yeah, speaking of holding both accessories, I obviously have to mention it, even though I've already mentioned it in this review, but wearing and rubbing on these weapons is ever more apparent. Even every single time I put a weapon into his hand, and I think it's worse for the Death Valley Harvesting Tool, I see a black remnant not coming from his hand because I'm convinced his hand is just molded black plastic. So there's got to be a case where the paint, whatever paint they used for the handles on both the weapons, but even more on the Harvesting Tool, 
that paint is wearing off, and that's a shame. It shouldn't be the case. Enough companies have done accessories, included accessories, with their figures, and it's never been a problem like this. So whatever it is, whatever paint that McFarlane has opted to use, and it's not him specifically, but the company that produces these figures, whatever paint they're using should probably go back to the drawing board because every single time you put weapons into the Skull Trooper's hands, and I can't imagine it's just Skull Trooper, but anytime you use these weapons in anyone's hands, you'll probably start seeing even more paint coming off, and that's a real shame. Again, as for Skull Trooper, excluding for whatever hiccups I have with the accessories, the Skull Trooper's a neat looking character. Doesn't rely so much on paint as it is just the paint that's on him is giving you the, the oomph, if you will. It's a shame, uh, just because the sculpt the way it is, so much of it gets lost because it was just cast in black plastic. But it's based on the designs of Fortnite, the, the character in Fortnite. So again, you have to take it with what, de what designs were already in place when McFarlane decided to make figures. Uh, it's got a bulkiness, a little bit completely a different body type mold to Cuddle Team Leader. And of course, there is the fact that it looks a lot like the characters from Karate Kid. I'm sure I'm not the only one that has said that. I'm sure lots of people have said that, so I can't take any credit for that whatsoever. But I love the fact that there's that 80s nod to one of my favorite movies of all time, Karate Kid. He's not my favorite. Cuddle Team Leader, I think, is still my favorite of the two figures that we've had a look at. My hope is to have a look at the rest of the figures. So if you guys are in... If you guys are interested, I should say, in Fortnite, let me know down below and let me know if you'd like to see me review the rest of these figures. In the meantime, though, if you are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, both Skull Trooper and Cuddle Team Leader, I was able to find at my local Walmart. I want to say the price point on both of these were about $34.99. They were about $34 and all that lovely tax that would be included along with that. So if you are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, the price point on these is on average what you would expect to pay for about a seven to seven and a half inch tall figure. They're not any more expensive, but they're not any bit cheaper either. Today we were having a look at the new McFarlane toys. This was the Fortnite Skull Trooper. A decent looking figure, not a whole lot of paint, but man oh man, a lot of problems with those accessories. And they were really neat accessories as well. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? Certainly, more videos will be coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.